Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our series in Profile Manager and we're going to look at how you manage devices using Profile Manager. Now for those of you that uh, are new to this, this is the first one you're looking at. This is a part of a series that I've done on Mountain Lion Server and more specifically uh, I also have a, seri a, a mini series here on Profile Manager. And so if you'd like to uh, catch up and you're wondering how we got here, I'll try to put a list in the screen uh, notes. Uh, in the show notes, I'll try to put a, a couple of links, uh, and you can also go to my YouTube channel, and you'll see a playlist for Profile Manager that'll take you from the start all the way through to figure out how it works. Uh, so th what we've done so far is talked about how to set it up, we've talked about enrolling your devices, and we've talked about doing users and groups in this side panel. Now today we're going to talk about devices and device groups, and this really is a, a con another convenient way to be able to uh, manage situations, because usually individuals are linked to particular devices, and so it makes it uh, easy to manage the devices uh, and it also avoids like I, I had said in the other screencast there is uh, has been a bug that's shown up every once in a while for uh, managing users when you're doing parental control sometimes it ends up managing the admin account as well and so if that's happening to you you'll need to remove those profiles and start over and manage them by device groups okay so just want to give you a heads up on that but let's take a look at what this looks like and so just like with our users on the device side here you can see all the different devices I've got enrolled I've got some iPods I've got some uh, MacBook Pros I got iPhones that kind of thing and so it gives me this uh, ability to look at these things now these things show up when and you enroll them when you use the My Devices link that we talked about uh, in the enrollment exercise and you enroll these uh, computers and items they show up on the side over here. So let's take a look at uh, what it looks like and the information we get from it. So you can see here uh, we've got uh, the uh, iPod. What's great is it recognizes the icon uh, a little bit too of what type of device it is which is kind of neat. Uh, and then we've got a general profile for this iPod and as I've shown you before if you just click Edit uh, it will bring up uh, a screen that will allow you to edit uh, particular things on this particular device. Now it shows everything on here. Uh, it shows the iOS and the uh, OS 10. You don't have to worry about the OS 10 stuff. If it's an iPod, you're only working in this section here and the top section. If it's a Mac, you're working in the bottom section. And I'm going to show you uh, how to set all of these things up and what they look like, but we'll do that on the group side of it. I just wanted to show you what this screen looks like, so let me cancel that. Now we've got activity here just like we have in the other places and you can see the different uh, push notifications and things that have been sent out, those that have failed, those that have succeeded. Uh, a couple of these failed because I just stopped the process when I was testing, uh, but it, it usually works pretty well and shows you the different things here. Uh, we've got an about section which will tell you about uh, your particular device, give you the capacity, the software version you've got, serial number, all that good stuff. Uh, you can get other details on it, the security restrictions, the installed applications you've got, all those kinds of things you can get more detail just by looking at these particular triangles. So that works out neat. And then you have apps which like I said uh, is usually um, you have to have iOS 5 or greater as this tells you here and uh, you know that's usually something that more companies would do as opposed to home users. I might cover a screencast on that later but uh, it's, it's out of the range for what we're doing today. All right, so that gives you uh, an idea of what that looks like for the individual devices. Now, what I want to do, and, and you can also come down here on this device, you can lock it, you can clear the passcode, you can wipe it, and you can update info on it. Uh, kind, of, kind of force a push uh, to the device if you've made different changes. Okay, so that gives you kind of the devices and what that looks like. Uh, you can also add a device whenever you want. You can click a plus here and add the device ahead of time with the serial number so that then when the user adds the device, your info, info and your profiles are already in place. Uh, so usually for home users you're probably not so worried about that but that's something you can do in a corporate environment that's helpful. Now if we go to the device groups uh, in this area you'll notice that I've got three different device groups. I've got one for desktop maps, Macs, I've got one for iOS devices and I got one for iOS devices for the kids. And so it'll show you the same kinds of things on here. Uh, let me show you the kids for a second. So I've got a general profile. I'm going to show you how this gets edited. Uh, you've got members, so it shows you what devices are actually in this particular group. Uh, you've got activity again, any activity on those devices of things we've pushed because I've made changes to the iOS kids profile. Uh, again, about, and again, there's not any uh, info that I need for that because it's a group, and then your apps. So if I go back to the uh, profile, let me just show you quickly what it looks like to edit. 
and it's just like uh, what we showed in the users area a lot of the settings are the same you can go in and update these various settings uh, on here you can set up their calendar their subscribe calendars those kinds of things uh, you can set up restrictions if you want to where you uh, again configure what can and can't be used on their particular uh, iOS device uh, you can configure accessibility on here um, which again you can you can lock to the app so you can limit the iOS device to one app only. So if you're using it kind of in a kiosk mode, you don't want kids getting deeper into it. It's only to do their homework on one app. You can lock it if you want to. Um, you've got global proxies. Uh, you can uh, also uh, do, set up your mail through here, as I showed you in the other screencasts. It looks a little bit more like the uh, some of the advanced settings we lost in server admin, not all of them. But you can configure mail here. Exchange if you've got it. Uh, this is your open directory, which you're not really going to need to configure. Uh, your contacts uh, that you can configure here and just set those up ahead of time, and then the address book will show up on their device. Uh, you can configure calendars, you can configure, you know, subscribe calendars, web clips, all that kind of stuff. And if you look, the iOS type of things are very similar to what I talked about in the users and groups uh, tutorial. So I'm not going to go over this in too much detail because I did it over there. Uh, like I told you, I'll do more on the mobility accounts in another tutorial. But uh, one ex extra thing that's added, a couple things that are added into this, is the actual directory. You can configure the uh, directory here where you actually bind uh, your particular uh, um, uh, computer or device to the server and again notice it's under iOS so you're gonna do it, it this only works for iOS but it allows you to bind uh, bind your uh, client to the computer and uh, I've uh, I've shown you how to do that before but this is a good way to do that uh, you can set up the login window so that when they log into the Mac what does it say there's a message you know what's the heading uh, what users and things do you want to do you want to show uh, on the window? Uh, here's other options where you can give the password hint when it's available, or you can disable that. You can disable automatic login. Uh, you can set all of these different things to either allow guest users or not. Right here in this particular setup, uh, you can set up access. Here's users that can access the login window. Here's users that you deny. I don't want those people getting my computer at all. If you know specific people you want to lock out, and then you can even have scripts uh, that you load in here that will um, automatically load onto your other computer and will start um, at the login uh, and so you, you can have the hook of being connected to your login and so if you're into scripting you can set that up uh, you'll notice there are login items uh, that you can also set up here as people log in and like I told you before when I talked about the AFP auto mount you can set those mounts up in here uh, if you want to and then when people uh, restart their computer and come into it those different folders that you have on your server will automatically load in the sidebar it's a real good service uh, you'll also notice again I talked about mobility last time in the dock you'll also notice software update where you can then configure software update for a particular URL that you want the computer to look for so for instance if you're downloading your updates uh, on your server as I showed you in the software update tutorial you can set up right here on the device uh, for it to look at your server instead of going to Apple's servers to re-download the update and so you set that information right here and it gets pushed right to the device again this is an iOS device I'm showing you so you wouldn't do it there it would have to be on a Mac but you can set that up uh, printing I showed you last time you've also got energy saver settings where you can come in here and set how long you want the computer to go to sleep uh, when you want the displays to go to sleep the wake options uh, you can talk about some of the portable uh, stuff in terms of battery you know when, when it's uh, portable uh, how long do you want the computer to go to sleep when it's on battery and what settings do you want when it's on the power adapter uh, because you know if it's using the battery you're gonna if it's using the plug you might let it stay on longer if it's the battery you don't want to wear it down so you might simplify it and then you can schedule it you can schedule the days and times and things to start the computer and sleep it and those those kinds of things uh, and then again parental controls custom settings those things are things that I showed you in the last screencast so that gives you kind of a feel of how to set this up it's very powerful and if you set this up this will get pushed to all of the devices that you've got and those changes and things will be right there on the computer uh, I'm gonna cancel this because I've already got it set up I don't want to change anything but that gives you a great idea on how to set that up and make it work uh, a couple other things on profile manager as we're coming to an end in this series is you know up here you can go to your particular devices you can download the trust profile this is kind of serves as a quick way to get to the my devices screen uh, by clicking on these links up here and you'll notice on the side here you have active tasks and these would be tasks that are pending or waiting to push their notifications out to the devices maybe they the devices haven't turned on yet or anything like that and then you've got a list of completed tasks and these are all the tasks that your server has done with push notifications 
ones, those that have succeeded when you did them so that you have a record of all the different uh, things that you've done through Profile Manager. Well, hopefully, uh, again, that's a whirlwind tour, but hopefully that uh, helps you understand devices and device groups and overall just Profile Manager. It's a really great tool. Uh, it really is a neat way to manage your devices and really uh, puts a lot of control and power in your hands uh, to make your computers run exactly the way you want them to run. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.